Welcome to an adventure like no other, as we take you on a thrilling ride in some new and old Jeep concepts. Join Regina and I as we explore the iconic Porcupine Rim Trail in Moab, where we drive a very unique vehicle and watch several other Jeep concepts in action. But that's just the beginning. The next day, we travel to an undisclosed location to check out and test drive this year's 2023 Jeep Concepts, a truly impressive lineup. And if that wasn't enough, I get the privilege of taking the wheel of a Jeep with a rich history, an old Jeep that once traversed the wilds of South America. So buckle up and get ready to join us as we take you along for a ride in some amazing Jeeps. Good morning, guys. We're out here with the Jeep Heritage Concept Drive this morning, and we're gonna go hit a trail called Porcupine Rim with all of these concepts that are from years past. This is a super fun event where we're with some great people. This is gonna be an awesome, awesome morning, and the weather is, it looks like it's gonna behave. This is something very special that the folks at Jeep do just before Easter Jeep Safari officially kicks off. Taking some of their Jeep concept vehicles from years past, bringing them out and allowing a few folks to join them for a day on the trail. Regina and I are honored to be invited to this very special trail ride and today we'll be getting behind the wheel of a 2018 concept called 4-Speed. This is a two-door Jeep Wrangler JL that has been stripped down to its bare essentials and made to be as lightweight as possible. There's no stereo, air conditioning, or heater. There's lots of carbon fiber bits and pieces and all kinds of creative ways that they've removed weight from this Jeep. There is also an SRT tune that's been done to the two liter turbo engine and this little Jeep scoots down the road and trail with ease. I may or may not have broken the tires loose on accident more than once. There are several other incredible concepts out with us today. A few more lightweight two doors from years past, the 20th anniversary concept, the Bob concept, one of my favorites from last year, and they brought along some of the recently released 20th anniversary Jeeps that are just now available to the public. It's a great convoy to be out on the trail with. Now the trail we are doing today is Porcupine Rim. You think we'd be doing an easy dirt trail with these very valuable concepts, but nope, that's not how Jeep likes to do it. This 18 mile round trip trail offers some of the most breathtaking views along the way and an awe inspiring view once you reach the top. This is a moderately challenging trail with some good obstacles, dirt, mud, and we even encountered a little bit of snow on our way up. You'll need a high clearance four wheel drive to navigate your way to the top of the trail and the payoff at the end is well worth the challenge of reaching it. Okay, so I've never been on Porcupine Rim Trail before and it's pretty fun. It's a little slow going, bumpy and lumpy, but it's a fun little trail and the views off to the side are really nice. And this little Jeep, this lightweight Jeep just goes and it actually is very fast driving up here on the road because they have stripped this thing down it is all carbon fibered out there's no heater or air conditioning uh, well, anywhere we have air conditioning with, well we've got <laughs> we've got air conditioning that's a good point but just about everywhere they could have stripped weight they have and this thing just scoots right along climbs over these little obstacles no problem uh, a lot of great people out here we got uh, roman and tommy from tfl off-road behind us jim morrison the uh Vice President of North American Jeep is here and he's in his personal Jeep. He's driving a Rubicon 4xE and that's his that's his daily driver and now he's out here wheeling it and he says he loves that. Of course, Nina Barlow is leading the way and keeping us out of trouble and giving us a lot of great information about this area. But you know, this is a trail that I've never been before, but uh, I'm liking it a lot so far. It's really cool. pretty big obstacle that we're gonna go through. And if I was in my Jeep, 
I would probably just blast through it, but this is not my Jeep. There is a lot of time and money invested in this thing. And so Nina's gonna come back and spot everybody through and I'm just gonna play it safe and let her spot me through uh, just to make sure I don't wreck this beautiful, nice concept. Okay, so we've climbed up, we're over 6,000 feet in elevation and there's all kinds of pine trees and junipers up here. And it's a little unnerving because this thing has carbon fiber fenders, a lot of lightweight carbon fiber throughout. But the last thing I wanna do is bang up a carbon fiber fender uh, on one of these trees. And so just going very steadily, nice and easy. But I will say, you know, I said this last year when Regina and I did this, we drove a two door last year that was super lightweight and nimble like this. I really, really like this kind of vehicle. Someday, someday maybe what I think we'll do is like a stripped down JK or something like that. What do you guys think? Would that be cool? Guys, we stopped to take a quick little break here, and I'm here with Jim Morrison. He is the vice president of Jeep North America. Did I get that right? Uh, close enough. Close Senior enough. vice president, doesn't matter. He's I'm the guy for Jeep, guys. Yeah. And, uh, and he's invited us out here to join us, uh, join him on this trip. And dude, I love that you're taking these concepts and going on a real trail with them. Because look, these are there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in these vehicles, but we're out here using them for real. We, we trust you. You're, you're, <laughs> you've got a good right foot. You know how to place the Jeep. But more importantly, it's just we love pushing the limits. Yeah. And we're out here doing it today. It's not just an easy trail. We're pushing it hard. Well, I think it's a testament to the fact that Jeep is an off-road brand, and they're out here proving it, and you're out here wheeling, man. And, uh, Excellent. Just, just thanks for having us. Later on, I had the pleasure of taking a ride with Jim for about an hour on a trail and ask him some very good questions about the future of Jeep. And if you're interested in hearing his answers, I'll leave a link to that video in the description. Now, after about two hours of wheeling and just having a great time, we finally made it to the top. And wow, what an incredible view up here. This was worth all the challenging obstacles and the mud and scraping on the trees. What an incredible view up here. You guys need to hit this trail for sure. We were in no hurry to leave the spot, but eventually we had to make our way down. But before we ended the day, I got to talk to one of my favorite father and son YouTubers. All right, guys, we just wrapped up the concept drive, the heritage concept drive. And Roman and Tommy from TFL Truck and TFL Off-Road have been out here just having a great time. What have you guys been driving? Yeah, it's been great. So we've been in this Gladiator um, Bob concept, which is a shortened Gladiator in the 40s, and it's just been an absolute brilliant day. Yeah, Yeah. Uh, we, we, we kind of grabbed the one with the biggest wheelbase and the biggest <laughs> tires, because I'm old and I like being comfortable. Yeah, we had the opposite. We had short wheelbase <laughs> and smaller tires, but we were following right behind you. But I mean, how cool is it that Jeep lets us take these $100,000 vehicles out on a, this was a legit trail, I agree? It was, it was really cool. I mean, you know, I think it was a little bit more stressed in this than I would be in just about any other thing out on that right. trail because I know if I pull that fender off, that's like a one of one. Oh yeah. Um, but it's absolutely amazing. Oh yeah. You know, you're so right. We go to so many car shows and I remember like being around cars where there's like a velvet rope mm -hmm. and you, you don't even look at it, don't right. even look. And here we are, you know, in this one-off right. concept, like yeah. bashing it up the trail. Yeah, they're muddy. They got a little scratched yeah. up today. It was a great time. Okay, uh, one question for you guys because this is, uh, this is kind of near and dear to me. My sons have been helping me uh, on my YouTube channel. I'm just curious, 
your perspective. You guys have been doing a great job working together, father and son team, for a long time. How's that, how's that been? Well, I was going to say I feel really blessed because my dad died when I was in college, and so I didn't. He loved cars, you know, and so he passed on the gene to me, and I was lucky enough to pass it on to him. So I feel really lucky to be able to work with Tommy. Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been a dream, right? Being able to work with your dad. We argue constantly <laughs> yeah, about like what the, the time. what the biggest tire you can fit under, like <laughs> anything is, and it drives my mom crazy. But it's a ton of fun. <laughs> it's awesome. That's I mean, that's the stuff you talk about on the campfire. Yeah, the tires yeah. and differentials and all that good stuff. And so. th thank God there's Google here because otherwise we. Still <laughs> be arguing <laughs> <laughs> right right well awesome well guys it's been so good being uh being out on the trail with you guys today i know we're gonna see you tomorrow at the concept drive i'm super yeah. excited about that and we're huge trail recon fans be sure to hit that like button <laughs> right on smash the subscribe but thank you brad it's no, a lot of fun okay. thank you guys i appreciate it guys if you are not subscribed to one of their many tfl <laughs> channels and if you love cars and trucks go check them out you'll love their videos ciao Behind me are some beautiful concept vehicles. We're gonna go get up and close and personal with them, and I think they're even gonna let us drive a few. We're here because our customers are here, and they keep coming back for their annual trek. This is the third year in a row that I've been invited to the Jeep Concept Reveal, and it is an honor to be out here with so many prestigious automotive journalists, content creators, and being able to talk directly with the Jeep engineers and designers while at this event. They talked to us extensively about this year's concepts and why they decided to build them and some of the things that make them just so special. And then they turned us loose and let us take them out on the dirt. All right, guys, we are cruising right along in the no name concept vehicle because they have not yet named this color. So here's a question for you. What do you think Jeep should name this color? I think it's pretty cool. Now. This is a four by E. We are in full electric mode, which is super quiet on the trail. You just hear the crunching of the tires on the rocks and the sand, and I love that sensation. But this also has an air ride system, which is very innovative. It's from AccuAir, and there's a little controller down here and allows us, it's got three settings. Normal, normal ride height is button one, button two, takes you to a three inch lift, and then the third button takes you to a five inch lift. There's a lot of applications for that kind of thing. So that's that's pretty innovative. I'm curious to see, you know, kind of long term how that how that works out and if this is something that maybe more folks will adopt. I think that's pretty cool. Now, John was telling me that one and two are okay for on road, but you wouldn't want to go to three, which is the five inch lift on road because it's gonna it's gonna kind of tweak the ge geometry just a little bit but really you don't need five inches off road i mean it might look cool but you really don't need it for cruising down the road now we are on part of wipeout trail uh, we're on a nice sandy section here it's pretty comfortable right mm -hmm. think? Very. yeah it's really comfortable we're gonna hit uh, some rocks and a little bit of uh slick rock up here beautiful views all around it's a gorgeous day to be out here in a four by e just put it in the third mode, which is the five inch mode. And so there's an air compressor that you can hear and that's pumping it up. We can feel it raise up. We've got a lot more clearance now. And I would say the ride is still very plush and nice. It doesn't feel stiff or harsh. I like it. All right, guys, now we are in the Scrambler concept. And this thing, this thing's a beast. It's just got bright colors, big tires. It's tall, it's chopped, and of course, it's got the 392 and you guys know I have an affinity for good horsepower. I love the electric vehicles and I'm excited about them, but I, I'm still a gas junkie. I think it's really cool. Now this is on an air ride suspension. So it's got a compressor back there. You can raise and lower it. I think that's some cool technology that's going to come. We've got that on a, another vehicle that's out here. Just the styling of this, the way they've opened up the doors. There's so much room in here. It just it's a cool concept i mean the scrambler has got a lot of heritage behind it and people love them i mean i i i have said for many years that i think the scrambler one day will be in my garage but how cool would it to be to have a scrambler like this in the driveway take it out on the trail and just enjoy it in a place like this something that's just got this much kind of power this kind of capability it's pretty cool guys this is a great concept jeep did a great job with this one it's nice that you trust you to drive on your own. Yeah, yeah, they, they let me loose, guys. Uh, I don't have a, uh, a Jeep uh, representative with me. So we got sideburn and we're out on the trail. And this is a Jeep Gladiator that has a lot of Mopar performance. And what I've found in the past is they do some concepts for performance parts. 
And so they've got some things on this Gladiator that potentially could be actually stuff you could buy in the future. And, and one of the things is that fold down grill that becomes a seat. You actually kind of like it a I lot. I want it, I want uh, it. Regina really likes that. Uh, I think it's interesting. I think it's a cool concept. I think there's a lot of people that would enjoy that. I don't know that it's for me, but Regina seems to like it. Then all the little storage and stuff in the rear. What I really like though, and I wish they could find a way to make it some kind of aftermarket part you could buy or you could you know, get it from the factory is those uh, jerry cans. They're like one gallon roto packs or jerry cans that are embedded into the rear of the truck bed. I really like that. It's really functional. It's a great place to store those. You know, you get a couple extra gallons of fuel and it just optimizes that space. I've seen that a couple times. They've done it on this one. I really like it. And one thing, you know, it's been a minute since I've driven a Gladiator and I'm reminded that this is just really comfortable. The long wheelbase on a Gladiator is always very nice. E-brake. E-brake. Put in first. Third gear is fine. Third gear is fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, straight up and, and we're good to go. And you're good to go. Fuel low. Oh, hell there, there is no fuel. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Well, guys, we're in Magneto 3.0 and I had the opportunity to drive 1.0 and 2.0 and now this one has got more power and it's got a new design to it. This is Jeremy, one of the exterior design guys for Jeep, Did it, something like that? What yeah, you? yeah, I, uh, I work in the design office. <laughs> yeah, so you had a big hand in, uh, in shaping this, yeah? Yeah, correct. We ended up, uh, for this latest version, we kind of took last year's model and uh, ended up shaping some things new, yeah. uh, cut the door, uh, stretched the door about six inches, laid the door back to get a little bit more of that a better egress uh, feel. New paint scheme, laid the windshield back about 12 degrees just okay. to give it kind of a, a chop top feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it gives it this really kind of cool, uh, cartoony almost uh, character. Um, new paint scheme, of course. Uh, still playing with the white and the blue, just to kind of so you you get an evolution of each one of the cars, sure. you know, so the white one, the first one was a, wall, a white car. Yeah. The second one, we did that kind of cool graphics uh, thing in the back. Um, and this one is uh, the same, so um, just kind of an evolution every time. We bumped the power up and for the motor, say it was like around 625 horse. Yeah. Uh, so what was it last year? So at 625, okay, I okay. think now we bumped it to around 650. Okay. And then, and then bumped up the, uh, um, the torque from like 850 to 900 this right year. Just a little bit, a little bit more power, just a little more juice. Yeah. New wheel, uh, active, uh, full beadlock, uh, 20 inch wheel on it. Still have the 40s from last year. But yeah, what was cool is like you know the the version from last year we ended up stretching the frame, at, uh, 12 inches. From, oh yeah. Uh, from what the original. Uh, oh right on. Magneto one was. So, okay. So it's like kind of gives it more of like a, a little bit of like that. Remember the the old TJ to LJ. Yeah. Where you get like that more of the 10 inch oh, yeah. stretch in the bus. Yeah, so the LJs of, are sought after. Yeah, yeah. I have one at home. Oh it's yeah, my, yeah. So it's my, my personal right on. LJ. Did, these switches are new. For the this switches year. are new. And you got um, there's a we have this one panel one pedal switch for the um, regen for the uh, like essentially for the braking. There's two power modes for max power and um, essentially the V6 version. So what like what the car originally came with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With 285 horse or whatever it is. Okay. So now then you can you can go switch it down to the V6 okay. or switch it up to the to the max. Power. Oh, that's cool. Well, I, I I really love the hood on this with that big yeah. piece of you know aluminum coming through there. Yeah. Then we ended up um, making a, a like a transparent uh, plastic cover so you can actually see that. Thing. Yeah, it's cool. So. Well, if I could only drive one concept this year, this is the one. Sitting so next to me is Mark Allen, the chief designer for Jeep and is responsible for this guy and all of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he's offered to take take me for a ride here and uh, and talk about this because I could talk about it all day. Having a 74 <laughs> Cherokee at home, I know a lot about it, but mine's not on a Ford by E. Yep. So, man, what what was the inspiration for doing this one? Uh, well, when we do what do we do with the vehicles for Moab, Moab um, we always leave or try to leave spot for a resto mod. Yes, and, thank you. And, and, yeah, thank you for liking it. Um, and, and I always get, I get funded through the brand and the brand guys are always like, ah, we don't sell those old cars anymore. I'm like, trust me, they're always the biggest, yeah. the, uh, the biggest hits. And we love doing them. And it's kind of a, a nice discovery going back. This is a 1978 Cherokee Sports 
utility. Okay. Uh, that it wasn't such a common phrase back yeah. then. And it was a body on frame. It had really the, the same or very similar running gear to a CJ. Yeah. Which was kind of the, the, the main line. This was a two door version of the Wagoneer, essentially. But the, uh, it, different than a, a CJ's, it had uh, creature comforts that were optional on that, like doors, <laughs> a heater, <laughs> right, right, a comfortable back seat, yeah, written, written in the back of the CJ, and uh, just a bit bigger, more space, and they were used, you know, really for more for inclement weather areas uh, where you had a lot of snow. Right. It was really four wheel drive was not as common as it is now. Yeah, or all wheel drive even. Um, so it was it was a little bit. In, a little bit different than uh, the mainline vehicles. You would have a family sedan right. or something like that. So, sports utility. What we wanted to do with it is grab it. We bought it off of Craigslist. Yeah, twenty five hundred bucks. Didn't have a, uh, a powertrain in it. Yeah. It was rusty. Where we were going to cut anyway. They're hard to find. A little bit hard to find. Yeah. Um, and we didn't need a pristine one. It was mm. not. It was not a perfect right. vehicle. It was in need of a lot of repair. The uh, thing that sealed the deal was a mint, perfect razor grill. And the razor grill yeah, is the yeah, one yeah. I love the most. Yep, yep. Didn't have a ding in it. Awesome. The rest of the car was in kind of bad shape. <laughs> um, and then what's done to it, the uh, fitting it to the, the uh, Wrangler. It's a Wrangler Rubicon 4 by e so yep. it was a four-door. We left all of the running gear intact. In fact, we're riding in battery mode. We're all moment. electric mode right now, guys. Yeah. This is not like driving mine it's at all. Super quiet. Yeah. Uh, it still has a few creaks and groans mm -hmm. that it was probably born with, but yeah. pretty, pretty tight. Yeah. Uh, the doors, on the outside, the doors are really about the only remaining thing original. We had to move the wheel base around a little bit, and okay. I think we were pretty clever with how we did that. Yeah. The roof had, uh, at some time, some point in its life uh, hosted a, uh, a dance party. Okay. It was pretty caved in, so we had to replace the roof. The roof is actually carbon, and we thinned it out, so they're, oh, nice. they're quite beefy and thick. And we just did a lot of little tricks to it. Uh, the whole nose, the, the hood, front fenders, all carbon fiber. Wow. The fender flares are carbon fiber. Oh my gosh. Um, but we tried to not show all of the modern pieces. Right. And we, you know, the, the whole thing is soaked in the 70s. That yeah. explains the paint job. Yeah. The slotted mags, which are 17s yep. to fit over the brakes. Oh, I love, I have, so I have slotted mags on mine. Yeah, it's I, I the right wheel. I love them, yeah, absolutely. We, we looked at a few and we were going through old, you know, four-wheeler magazines yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, we have an eight track in here. Yeah. Uh, the funny thing was uh, explaining to the young techs that were working on this, they, they'd they never seen, it was like uh, me looking yeah. at Vic Troll right, or something. Right. Um, how it worked and how quirky they were, but uh, yeah, fun, fun little pieces. It, the toolbox back right. here. It's an old. It's a snap on, which is cool. Okay. Um, and it hosts a uh, beverage kit inside of it. <laughs> right on. <laughs> <laughs> the tailgate was a mess. The, the bottom of the tailgate, we just cut it off. Yeah, I saw and you meshed it out a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And there's the. Uh, um, switch for the the compressor right you got the air, air compressor truck. and you can you can yeah. you can air up and have a beer at the same time back there. uh beverage yes yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah actually even the uh the the angle of the back window we sped that up and it was it it looks more cherokee to me somehow yeah uh we, it was the same vertical uh, orientation as the wagon air because we don't have windows back here we can do that and it was just those little touches actually the even the grill is a bit more sharp nose yes lean forward i like it a lot it is longer yeah um and then low back buckets uh, a lot of a lot of people don't understand that um they think wow the seat looks unsafe or something mm -hmm. and that's just how things work it's right? exactly how they were yeah. but it opens the car up so much right in here yeah What's your what's your favorite thing about this? Like the one thing that you just really love about it, you're so proud of? The Gremlin gas cap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, if you don't know, Jeep used to be made by AMC. Right. I'm, I'm kind of a closet AMC fan. Okay. And uh, these vehicles, this was a result of probably 400 late night texts back and forth with me and the, uh, the guys. I don't know where that the where it originated from, but we because uh, this, this vehicle had a big round gas cap. Right. Um, and the Gremlin's got a fairly intricate, unique gas cap, and we thought, well, it, it's cool. Let's let's do it. And um, found it on eBay. Okay. And we paid, I think, four hundred bucks oh for the gosh. Gremlin <laughs> gas cap. <laughs> but it's not it's a, not a repro. It's right. mint. Yeah. It's, it's super nice. 
uh, and we learned a lot of history about gr gremlin gas caps. There's there's an ultra rare one that the little character slides out of the way for a locking gas really? cap. Really? Yeah. Interesting. And the little guy's missing on all of them. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. But yeah, um, try not to take ourselves too seriously. Right. These are, they keep getting concept, called concept cars. That's really mm -hmm. their, our marketing department. But yeah. Uh, they're fully functioning yeah. as you're demonstrating yeah. right now. Well, and we demonstrated it yesterday when we went out on the trail with some of the heritage concepts. Yeah. You guys yeah. make these to wheel, which yes, I love. Yes, we do. Yeah. And you know what? We learn a ton from this. Yeah. Well, Mark, thank you for taking me for a ride in this. Oh, and a, absolutely. And, uh, my pleasure. And for continuing to build classic concepts. I hope they will let you to do that forever. <laughs> <laughs> I you. love this one. And I hope you guys bring this back as a as a heritage concept and I get a chance to take it out on the trail in the future because while mine will never drive like this, <laughs> I would love to drive this one again for sure. <laughs> Happy to do it. Thanks, Thank you. Buddy. Yeah. All right, guys, now we are in the departure concept. And this is the Wrangler that, again, Mopar Performance has really kind of outfitted with current performance parts and things that could potentially be coming out in the future. But I love this Jeep, but I will say Regina, mm -hmm. this is her favorite concept vehicle here. Why? Um, I love the color. Yeah. It's just this beautiful dark blue. It's called Dark Harbor. Yeah. So kind of a nod to the Navy, in my opinion. I think there should be some uh, anchor Easter eggs somewhere. <laughs> I don't think there are, but there should be. And you got the nice and tan yes, leather too. Yes, it's just, it's beautiful. It's like a work of art. Yeah, it's really gorgeous. Uh, in the light, it is awesome. But they've done some really interesting things, specifically- The fenders? The fenders, they're not for sale, but <laughs> they are a concept and they're a high line fender. And I will tell you right now, Jeep, if you make these, I will put them on my Jeep. And mine. And Regina's, we love them. We will paint match them and put them on our Jeeps. The other thing is the tailgate, uh, the tire carrier there. That's that, pretty cool. That's pretty cool because you can switch that tire to the inside and it gives you better departure angle. Hence, Hence the, name. the name, departure. So some pretty cool innovations on this Jeep specifically. And uh, whoa, whoa, easy girl. Hang in there, it I is, got it. It is a four by E. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're driving in electric mode again. And uh, and you said you wouldn't mind having one of these. I want one, Not, wouldn't mind, I want one. <laughs> she wants one, but it's gotta be in this color. So we'll have to figure yes, that out. Absolutely. <laughs> Hi, I love this vehicle. <laughs> All right guys, we are in the Grand Wagoneer Overland concept. We've got Tim. The, the <laughs> Tim, what's your title? Senior Exterior Design Manager in Jeep. Yeah, he's the guy <laughs> that does that kind of stuff. It's cool. And Regina's in here. We neither one of us have ever driven in a Grand Wagoneer, and oh my gosh, is this thing plush? Oh, very much so. It's the most comfortable vehicle we've driven all day out here on the trail. It's the quietest, and it has got crazy creature comforts. Um, but I'm the, getting a massage right now. Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, yeah, come on. That's crazy. Uh, this thing is awesome. Uh, it's on 35s. They did that with no lift. There's a little bit of trimming that had to be done, but you can put 35s on here if you want. And it's got this suspension that goes up and down. So you get all this clearance and we're on, you know, we're not doing hardcore stuff out here, but these are some pretty good obstacles. You could take the family out and go on a good overland trip and hit some good moderate trails. Now, these things are not cheap, let's be honest. Uh, my understanding is this is $115,000 optioned out, but that's that's a target audience for this kind of vehicle. This is not uh, this is not for everybody. I would love to have one of these. Uh, this would be this would be great on a massive long trip like to Alaska. So what's going if you want one of these? We're not getting gotta go. we're not getting rid of anything. Okay. <laughs> uh, up top is a you know it's it's we talked about this uh, two years ago at Overland Expo is the Red Tail uh, rooftop tent and it's it's well beyond a rooftop tent. It is the life of luxury up there as far as rooftop tents go. But that thing's a thirty five thousand dollar option. So you're gonna you you are gonna have a very expensive build, but you are gonna have have a very luxurious trip uh, driving and, and being able to hit the trails like this. I mean, you know, this is a big vehicle, but you know, I think of I think of the Ram Power Wagon. The Ram Power Wagon, you know, I wheel that a lot and we hit some hardcore trails. That's actually bigger than this. You've got, you've got less departure angle with this. You've got a little bit shorter wheelbase. So, you know what? This is a pretty good, it's yeah. a pretty good off-road overland vehicle. And I think I think you need to get behind the wheel. What do you think? Sure. Regina enjoyed driving this just as much as I did. It's a great vehicle. Now the next vehicle I get to drive, well, this one is a very special piece of history.
Guys, this could possibly be the highlight of EJS for me for 2023. I am in one of the most iconic and historic Jeeps ever. Uh, and I'm here with Chris Collard, who is the owner of this Jeep. Chris, hey, dude, <laughs> thank you for letting me come along and ride in this thing. What a piece of history. Yeah. Tell I'm us about you here. Yeah. It's great. Tell us about this Jeep a little bit. So it's one of five of the Expedition de las Americas yep. CJ7s. Um, so if people aren't familiar with Expedition de las Americas, it was a project that Mark Smith and a whole bunch of guys from Jeepers Jamboree put together in 1978. Right. They went from the tip of South America and Ushuaia to the tip of North America and Fruita Bay, yeah. uh, including crossing the Darien Gap, which right. is between Colombia and Panama. And it's crazy. No man's land. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So and, was, and how long was that trip? The entirety of it was about 21,000 miles, and it took them six months. So they had a couple of little breaks in between yeah. the prep, in between the Darien. Um, and when they got out of the Darien and getting the vehicles kind of back into mechanical, they had a real hard time in the Darien. Lot oh, of, yeah. Lots of breakdowns. Yes, yeah, Darien Gap is no joke. Yes. Especially for, you know, a vehicle like this. But at it, at its time, this was it. This was the best off-road vehicle you could get. Exactly. Right? So its low gearing was a T18 trans, uh, transmission that has a 6.32 first gear. Yeah. And a uh, Dana Spicer 20 transfer case. So that was like, and it had a the um, limited slip, clutch type limited slip in it. Yeah, and, it, and that was back. it. And they were getting after it. The guys, there, there's a there's a movie out there and you can easily find it. Uh, it's worth watching. It's it's so cool to watch these guys just endure the adventure that they must have had in this vehicle. Brutal. It's amazing. Yeah, brutal is probably a good word for it. I'm, I'm sure they, uh, you know, they were glad to be finished with the trip, but I'll bet those were memories that stuck with them forever. Crazy place. Okay, so here's here's the question I have for you. And we, we talked about this a little bit, but I I wanna, I wanna share it with these guys. So there were five of these, but there was one other vehicle. There was, the, and that most was people Cherokee. don't know about. That's the Cherokee! Right, <laughs> and so that was the support vehicle. They yeah. didn't do the dairy and they yeah. shipped it around. Um, and uh, it was the support vehicle, but when it got back, so I did a little research on that after we talked and got a hold of Tim Stegan. He was an OG from the original trip. Yeah. Still has his, his Jeep. And he said, you know, it was sold. One of the guys from the trip ended up with a vehicle yeah. in Georgetown. You know, they're all local guys. And it was it was in a crash and it was totaled. But I mean, totaled is one thing, but right. they still look for that vehicle yeah. in Georgetown. It's like, it's gotta be stuck in a berry it, bush somewhere. It could be somewhere. And they haven't found it oh, yet. Oh, I, so, I would soak that Jeep up idea. in a heartbeat. Yeah. In a heartbeat. Yeah, well, no idea. So. Well, man, thank you for keeping this going. I know you've got uh, you got a little bit of mechanical work you're gonna do to keep this thing running strong yeah, for a long, yeah. long time, but thanks for keeping the heritage, man, because this is such an iconic shape. It's fun. I went, I'm actually doing a, a series for it on our channel. Right on? Yeah, on the Gun Jeep and channel. Okay, right on. So it's, it's goofy, it's just me working on the, on the Jeep. Heck yeah. You know. Where do people go? What is the, what's the YouTube channel called? Oh, it's called uh, Gone-GPN. Guys, go like, check it out, for sure, 100%. <laughs> Uh, what and a what a special opportunity, guys! I'm in Moab. <laughs> I haven't driven manual in a minute. <laughs> Don't you love that? that really low, granny low. Yeah, yeah. Oh come on, man! The the memories. You know these guys must have had. They yeah they yeah. did. So what's the story with the hood? Do you know? I do. Um, yeah, that happened in the Darien. Okay. Um, so they had just a lot of mechanical problems. Drive lines, axles, differentials. I mean, they were just going they after were, it. It was it was a survival mode. Yeah. It's like, and your vehicle is, the, I mean, absolutely, it's part of your team and you got to take care of it. And they tried, but they just had mechanical problems. Yeah. So it, it was getting uh, it broken drive lines and uh, I think a broken axle on the back and it was being winched up one of the muddy it's just dense, dense jungle. Yeah. And so it, I apparently the cable broke and it went down the hill like a uh, pachinko ball. Man. Yeah. And uh, fortunately, nobody was hurt. Right. Well, and they still drove it out. They got all. Yeah. They That's got all crazy. The out of it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So we're doing the restoration on it. We're not touching the sheet metal. It's like I nice. love the dents, yeah. the patina, all the old graphics. Oh yeah. And if you look at some of the stickers on there, it's like. Krager wheels. These yeah, are the yeah. original Krager wheels. Nice. And they were running Rancho suspension. So Rancho's got gave you some shocks for it. Right just trying to keep it 
period correct. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I love it. Well, Chris, we're gonna get blown out with the yeah, wind. Yeah, we here. are gonna get blown Dude, out. Thank you so much for letting me drive this today. I really, what a special treat. We're, I really Absolutely, appreciate it. Absolutely, Brad. Thank you. Hey, guys. Well, guys, we have had a blast driving the Heritage Concepts and this year's 2023 concepts. Mother Nature has decided to throw 30 mile an hour winds at us. Thankfully, we were able to drive all of them and film them and share them with you before that happened. I would love to hear what your favorite concept was this year. Let us know down in the comments. Make sure you check us out over at trailrecon.com. Until next time, we'll see you in the next video.